Uh, we're back in Echo. I had to cut off our discuss our discussion of our, our lore breakdown of Cotton Eye <laughs> Joe that we were having. Where did he come from? Where did he go? Where did he come from? Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Stephanie just started posing the lyrics of the song earnestly, and then I just responded with like, "Today on Night Mind, we'll be <laughs> unpacking the mystery of Cotton Eye Joe." <laughs> Did you know that Nightmind's a furry? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a cool design. He's got like the four he's got a four eyed like demon cat character with a suit and everything. Yeah, I know that that was like I've seen him on stage before. There was art of Not that. In a lot like on he's had videos where he's shown that art before. Yeah. And I think in the end, end credits sometimes. But it's specifically the fact that the uh Full perp, the guy that did our animations, has his other series about these uh, these butlers that all man the, this rich eccentric like this eccentric millionaire's house, and they just are bottomless and being butlers, and that's their <laughs> duty, I guess. And uh, he, he got Nightmind to voice one of them oh, <laughs> in the comic. He he does and have I'm like a this is incredible. He has a great <laughs> voice, that's, honestly. That's, really that's not the crossover I was expecting. No, uh, I just I. Uh... I like being exposed to ARGs, so <laughs> that's why I like I, I looked into him a long time ago. But besides that, the uh, the horror of our of this of this game is extending beyond the screen. It's reaching into real life, Stephanie. I'm sure you know what I mean. Just that I accidentally chunted myself. What? <laughs> and becoming the, the chunter. <laughs> Chunting. So it's because his name's Chase Hunter. So oh no! Oh, so, oh! I forgot. Yeah. That's just. I hate that. That's that's a that's a gross sounding word. I'm not yeah. a fan of it. It's, a, it's not a good sound. That's why every now and then I'll I'll say something stupid like a chunter must chunt because it's a stupid <laughs> like fucking bloodborne joke. But uh, chunter's got a chunt. I was like, okay, I gotta I gotta get back on track with the beard because I let I just ignored it for like two or three weeks and I was like, okay, I need to. But I'm also lazy about beard, so my approach is just to shave down all the parts that I don't want, and then I just take the clippers, like the guard, and I just like drag it over the normal part of the beard to get it to be the right size. But of course, beards just move around constantly, so you never get it all. So I just like will do that like twice a day for a bit when I'm trying to get when I'm trying to get it like tamed correctly without actually having to do like. Careful, Manscaping. like insane beard grooming stuff, uh, and it's like eventually you just like shave off enough the weird stray hairs that way that it's like it, it gets orderly ish. Uh, but I, I was about to go to the this uh, this furry event at a gay bar with Toaster, and I was it was I was like it's late at night and I just like I'll, I'll just do a pass just to feel better about myself, and I did the opposite of that, which is that I dug directly into my face with the clippers with no guard so i just took out this whole chunk of the side of my face uh like of my beard i mean chat yeah i was, I was, I was gonna face. i was gonna say like like I, I, like you not, you're not skin. you're not gonna mangle yourself with those kind of devices but you will just obliterate your beard uh because I, I was just like rapidly just being like i'm just gonna cut through with the with the guard and just and just do a pass again and you'll hear some of those little that means you got strays but instead i just like jackassed myself like those little interstitials of jackass where they just like buzz somebody in the back of the head i did that to myself on my face uh i just gouged a giant like index card size piece of my beard out and i'm like well that's that's it. <laughs> I just have to make it. I have to clear that. I have to clean that up, and I have to make it symmetrical. So now I j now I have Chase's hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay I, well, first of all, I wish you didn't point that out because <laughs> I was like gonna I was gonna be like, but Keith, I like your haircut and your beard cut. Like you look very very slick right now. Then you gotta tell me that it looks like Chase. <laughs> there have been people who have had goatees in the past, and it has worked for them. <clears throat> My my dad committed to a goatee for like twenty years. <laughs> yeah, I know. My, my dad still rocks the, the goatee, and yeah. he shaved it off one time. And all of us, all of his children, said, "Do not do that ever again, Dad. We don't know who you are. Like, put that beard back where, like, where it came from, yeah. or so help me." But the moment I did it, I was like, it was like that moment where you like drop, you like you just finished making an entire plate of food, and then you drop the plate, and the plate shatters, and your food is gone, and also the plate is shattered, and it's just several new problems, and also you still haven't, you still don't get to eat, so it's like and you a cry. compounding problem. It's, it is like one of the most like 
cry worthy moments that happens in mundane life is like that's so just it, it, it incredibly is, demoralizing it is honestly heartbreaking like you spent the last 20 minutes working on something and you not only have undone the solution that you were making but also you've made a new problem and also something is broken <laughs> on top of that so you just and have, also you're hungry you get to clean something up and apologize and like a set is incomplete now and also you're still hungry so you're now like do i spend even more money just ordering something now or do i start over hungrier and later <laughs> <laughs> So in that case, you're like, you just look at the chunk of beer that's gone. And you're like, that's, I just put it back. Like, <laughs> no, okay. For, for the, for the record, everyone's keep... been very nice, even though I was very sad and, and fucked no, up about no, it. I actually, everyone's like, no, it I looks great. Look... No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm going to find out real fast how honest everyone's been the moment I put out the next video essay when I'm stuck with this beard. <laughs> Dude, I, <laughs> it's I not actually, gonna grow back in time. <laughs> I think you look really good. I thought you did this on purpose. <laughs> I salvaged it on purpose. Yeah, it looks good. So I was like, I am not going baby face again. I did not like that. No. So I just, I took what I could You don't have a douchebag face like Chase does. <laughs> so it doesn't, you don't look like a douchebag. You just look like a guy with a goatee. <laughs> a, a nice person with a goatee. Uh, so anyway, we're back to Echo. It's been a while. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> doing good. I don't have a beard, so my life's going all right. <laughs> I don't have to think uh, about that at all. So we were just so Carl just failed his job interview, and Flynn kind of let it drop that he's thinking of maybe leaving Echo or doesn't know if he'll stay in Echo on some level. And it was that exact, extremely relatable thing where you kind of accidentally hint at something, and then you're like, "Ah, oh, fuck! I don't want to get into this. I don't want to explain this. I don't want to talk about this now. Why did I? Why did I drop that hint? Why did I mention that?" So I, I 100% relate with Flynn. Uh, Instantly wanting to undo the words and not and is being pissed that Chase is like prodding at it now. <laughs> but now we're in the back word to do back work back room to do <laughs> our uh work for once, even though we know it's doomed to fail in every timeline, I'm sure. Yeah, we were sadly dismissed from the room while the grown-ups yeah. have the grown-up conversation that Chase isn't allowed to be a part of, so you, we're in the room doing our work. You better make a count, Chase, because you don't know this, but we probably know this and that's probably your last chance in this room yeah it is saturday yeah the mail room looks a little different for some reason it's not nearly as neat as it was with some of the parcel folders scattered on the main table documents dog-eared and tape tagged i step forward and he and the heel of my foot hit something hard and metal it rolls out from beneath me and i have to use my tail to catch my balance jesus Fuck! I find myself involuntarily clutching my chest, trying to regain my composure as I check what I nearly broke my neck on. A fireplace poker? <laughs> well, actually, pokers. There's like five of them just sitting here on the floor. Someone having a duel? Thank god I didn't step on the pointed end. What are these even doing here? Dude, it's like a workplace bonding experience. They're all just gonna <laughs> duel each other with fireplace pokers. <laughs> Work out your aggression. One of us isn't leaving this room. <laughs> it's like, oh, you didn't replace the paper and the copier last week. Ah. <laughs> Alice says you haven't been a team player. <laughs> <laughs> Get those TPS reports to me by Tuesday. I step around the pile when I hear the sound of Flynn's raspy voice from the other room. You didn't see anything? Carl speaks next, but his tone is too low and rumbly to make anything out. I remember the other day that while I was working on the computer in the corner, I could hear most of what was being said in the main office. The walls are thin here. Dude, you have to listen Of course in. Chase would listen Th in. That's the... They... What... <sighs> If every once in a while they give us a really dumb option, and it's like, well, of course you I do think this. Assuming that there's, uh, that these are affecting the ending on any level, or, uh, that there's, like, maybe a point system akin to, like, Ad Astra, where a series of choices collectively make certain endings happen, or, they, or that's how Jenna's ending worked, I think, is that you... You had a bunch of chances for choices, and they added up to something. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine that something like this is like... Uh, Chase continually is uh, indiscreet about Flynn. Like, the way that he... One, he's like 
Something that can be said about Flynn, to his credit, is that he has slept with the majority of this friend group and none of them know. <laughs> that is true. He slept with Chase, Leo, and Carl without any of them knowing that he slept with any of the other ones. Yeah. And that's noteworthy. <laughs> and thanks to Chase, all of them know that. <laughs> He's now. single-handedly ruined yeah. Flynn's whole web of like, relationships. Like letting Chase into his life blew that all up. And that led to Flynn having that line along the lines of like, like he knows the rest of us have to still live in the mess after you leave, right? Yeah. And then uh, even after that, then he takes uh, Daxton and Carl to the smoke room. So they see this part of Flynn. And then he goes into the smoke room with Flynn and judges him for it and so on. So like he's just been awful the whole time. So I think the uh, uh, leaning in with all the other choices and moments that have happened so far, I think that not listening in is the ideal outcome for Chase and what he should be doing because he should be learning his lesson at this point not to constantly pry into Flynn stuff. But we're playing the uh, get freaked out bad end sounding or we're, we're making Chase pick the things that we don't think he should do anyway lately. So well, okay. he's going to listen in. Of course, on paper, like even, even without any of the surrounding situation, a human yeah. being in the situation is supposed to not listen in. That is what is has has been decided by society is the polite and like moral thing to do. But I, if I were to take a poll of like the human populace right now, the number of people who would actually uh, just focus on the project would be so minimal. Yeah, that that just seems like like, like every once in a while. My brain's incapable of focusing on the project. Like I can't, I can't do something else when I'm hearing people talk. Like that involves reading. Yeah. Like I could like work with my hands while someone's while someone's I, talking. I, I could paint while my parents have an argument in the yeah. next room. <laughs> like I could play a video game, I could pull staples, I could like mark out stuff, I could draw. I cannot read a bunch of documents when someone's talking next to me. Let alone the idea that's like, oh, they're talking about the, the smoke room, aren't they? Because I assume that Flynn is trying to figure out what Carl saw at the smoke room. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just the last thing that we know, anyway. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna listen in because I want to listen in. <laughs> <laughs> I move to the corner of the room and press my ear against the wall. At first, I don't hear anything, but then Carl coughs and it sounds like he's right next to me. Dude, I I don't know what you're going off about. Don't bullshit me. Flynn snaps back. Silence follows. I hear what sounds like metal scraping against the wall. The plastered drywall creaks ever so slightly in reaction to Carl's shifting weight. I, I don't know. Flynn sighs. But... But why didn't you tell me you were going? I might not. Nothing's set in stone. It's not my decision anyway. What do you mean it's not your decision? Dude, you're like an adult with money. I hear the sound of typing on an old mechanical keyboard, the intermittent pecking evident that it's Flynn. It's my aunt. She wants to bring me up north for a while. Oh. Carl coughs again. Is this for, you know, that FLDS stuff? Do we know what that is? I don't think so. I was going to say FLDS. That's an inscrutable acronym, unless you already know it. Sorry, initialization. Initialism. Is it which one is it? Is it initialism? I think it's only an acronym if it spells something. Oh. You well, know, you know I shit. I I actually don't fucking know. The office chair creaks. Flynn must be leaning back or standing up. She gets all obsessed with shit, like, oh. she's religious and all that, but she doesn't give two fucks that I like dick. Latter-day Saints. S oh, the Latter-day Saints. But of some place, so like F, like, it, usually the first LDS. letter is the place where it's at. Florida Latter-day Saints up north. <laughs> or, yeah, so, so, yeah. <laughs> Flynn loves dick stuff. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> that's why that's that, That's why that part's true, where he's like, yeah, she doesn't care. Encourages it, even. Yeah, she's all religious about dicks and yeah. stuff. 
She only believes what she wants to believe in. A lot of that shit's made up. Even more made up, I mean. Wow. Even for me. <laughs> like there's degrees. There's, there's <laughs> of degrees of delusion in terms of religion. Like, there's a pause. I'm gonna go full fedora. Oh yeah. no! I was about to jokingly say like, is this like even like like Reddit atheist? Dude, Reddit atheists make me look bad. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'm like, Ugh, why do you have to be a fedora neck beard? People just be a reasonable, nice atheist who doesn't have to hate yeah. people for being religious. It's a weird- if you just acknowledge that you don't believe in God, people get kind of weird about it these days. I mean, I guess you- they were always kind of weird about it, and that, uh, they- if- because if they believe, then they, they would get mad about things before, but it is this weird, like, wraparound to being like- there's like this dismissive, like, uh, like, oh, it's like, uh, how do you put it? I guess just that Reddit atheist became like another one of those, like, shorthands you used to dismiss an entire, like, concept. Kind of like how, like, uh, people would just, like, say Orange Man bad just to mock anyone complaining about Trump or something. Like, this, it sort of, like, became this weird, like, I guess it's thought turning, a thought terminating cliche, I guess. Like, you just, you say this phrase and then just move on. And like, ha, I have to think, let's think about that person. They're a thing that I have a label for, and I'll just move on now. Well, I do think everyone, like, there will be, like, a, a, a like, a diatribe, and, like, they're, oh, well, look, look at who... Like who who posted? Look at the picture, and it's like a guy in a fedora with yeah. a neck beard. And it, there's nothing wrong with being a guy with a neck beard and a fedora. And there's nothing wrong with being an atheist. There's nothing wrong about being both of those things. But I will say, if a person sees that as the commenter, they're going to be like, "Oh, I don't have to read this because it's by one of those people." Yeah. <clears throat> there's like a discrimination aspect about it. I'm trying to rebuild atheist credibility, <laughs> and like. The extent of m me being obviously atheist is just me not talking about religion. So, like, it's the lack thereof. And then me occasionally making, like, a funny joke to people who I know are probably also atheists. Like, you know, like, who, like who's God? Who dat? Like, I don't know who that is. You don't exist. There's also, like, very... There's admittedly been some very strange trajectories where, like, uh... Like, the, the YouTube skeptic community was a series of like youtubers that would like debate creationists and so on or yeah that became a, a trend for a while yeah but for some reason all of those people almost collectively almost all of them naturally transitioned somehow collectively into being like anti-feminist and i'm like those are unrelated yeah, concepts yeah it's unfortunate because that does there it's is like, some sort like of a, weird it's, it's a bun line. Like, it's a bunch of white nerds that were all debunking creationists, and then and it became Anita Sarkeesian happened, and for some reason they all jumped on the idea of having to defeat her now, and I'm like, that's weird, because feminism's not relatable to creationism in terms of, like, 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 uh, credibility, or, no. or even, or even political alignment? No, like, it's very not strange. even political alignment. Like, it's, you jumped, you jumped completely to the opposite end of the spectrum and attacked people that you, I would have assumed you were more likely to be aligned with because you were going after creationists before? What a strange phenomenon to have happened to a bunch of people. And, uh, I don't, I don't know how that happens. It, I, I, I thankfully saw it all from the outside, and that I also didn't watch any, like, anti-creationist content to begin with. Like, that's just, like, a weird thing to obsess over. I think I I watched the, the Bill Nye debate against, uh, I think his name's Ken Ham, I think. He's, like, the Creationist Museum creator. Mm. I, I, I watched that because that was, like, that was hyped up when that came out. Yeah. Um. But no, I think there just might be a. I think there might be a crossover between. Okay, here's 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 how I think the crossover happened. I think what it is is I think you had a lot of people who weren't uh, very socially accepted and turned to like wanting to be like to be edgy, and then I think being atheist is something that like can, can be seen as just being edgy. I mean, granted, I think I think it's well founded. Obviously, it, it does feel like two but, different chances for people just to be contrarian and smug. And yeah, like very self-assured, yeah. like I'm the smart one and they're the dumb one. And, well, I, and I have and, to be the smart one because yeah. all these people are idiots for not accepting me and I, maybe I got bullied a little bit. And so I'm going to be really edgy. And I think being edgy also drives you into those circles of like being women hating too. Yeah. So I, I think I think the atheism and the women hating crosses over because all the people wanting to be edgy 
by being an atheist, kind of ended up accidentally in the corner with all the like anti-feminist and incels and stuff and also being like not socially accepted maybe they don't yeah. have sex a lot it makes so you realize they, that they're like you know, very like ideologically incoherent just sort of sad people that just want to look cool on the internet and that's the real motivation for why they did any of it to begin with and that means that none of this ever had a point <laughs> they were never actually ideologically motivated they were it was just about this format and that's a bummer because i am ideologically motivated and they're making yeah. me look bad when they're just going on they're just saying mean things about people for no reason the just, entire just to be edgy online and the entire reply format on youtube is just a really bad format because you're, you're just cheating you just take somebody else's video or interview or debate or whatever they had and you retroactively cut it up into a bunch of clips and then you just have infinite time to formulate like snappy zinger responses to every single line they have and you can creatively edit around any good points they make and, and just make them seem insane but also like you hold all of the power and the audience is already on your side because they're watching your channel so it's just like it's actually incredibly easy to look like the super smart guy that's right in that format. That's what Keith. So it's, that's what Keith does with his with his YouTube channel. It's, it's, why, it's why I specifically don't want to do reply videos is because it's like it's just cheating. You can all you just instantly look oh, like yeah. the smart right guy when you make that kind of content, and so it kind of, funnily enough, just makes it shows that like they were just people that did that stuff never were that good at what they were doing necessarily it was just like fish in a barrel and that they they started off by targeting somebody that was just so obviously wrong because creationism is just nonsensical and so you just have you it's not a you don't have to work hard for that format well, that's, that's why like flynn's little comment about like oh like they uh about there being degrees of ridiculousness in religion uh yeah Obviously, that, that is an edgy comment to make, but I do kind of agree with that because as a person who doesn't subscribe to any religion, I can look at them from the outside and I say, that one has like the least founding. Creationism had like creationism is very easily debunked. Yeah. So I don't know why you'd pick that. I don't know why you'd pick that one. Like it's 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 a lot easier to talk to a religious person that sees their Bible as a series of morality tales yeah, like that, are non that are non-literal. And, yeah. Instead of a, a like, guideline, actual facts. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, we had a creationist in our geology department, and you just couldn't talk to her. Because she was, like, from her perspective, she, I don't know why she was there, ultimately. I couldn't get down to the, like, the core of what she was doing in the geology department, but she was essentially, like, studying geology the way that I would study Marvel comics. Like, it's oh, like the, fan fiction of real life. Like, it's just, like, what a, it, oh, this cognitive dissonance of, of like, fan you're, like, you're just learning, like, fake lore for a world that you don't believe in. And I'm like, that's so strange to unpack. Which, it's, it, I guess it'd be like if I studied the Bible. It'd be, and then be like, oh, yeah, but this is just, like, it's the Bible. It's not well, no. history. Okay, but, like, for the parts but that are based, like, informed by history. I like religious studies. I would, I like a lot of Bible stories. I think they're really interesting. Yeah. And I... I would consider studying things like that. I took that. a class on Nor Norse mythology. But like, that makes more sense than, because like, geology is <laughs> it's not know. even like, it's not even fun. I, I never could figure it out. And also the rocks are in front of you. <laughs> like, that's the yeah. confusing part. Like, I don't know. You just look at that and you're like, huh, what, like, what a funny, what a funny prop. Yeah. What a funny mistake. What I never got my answers. Coincidence. I never got my answers because we went off to do the capstone course where you go off for a whole month on your big trip. And that's like the final course of the class. And uh, she got pregnant and couldn't go, and so I just never saw her again. Oops, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh at that. I never, but never dude. got to unpack that. <laughs> oh yoy. Anyway, we went full fedora on you. Anyway, chat. Uh. <laughs> I'm a lady. <laughs> Even hey. though none of those are fedoras. Hey, you, want, you want to talk about going full fedora, there's the part yeah. where the things that people call fedoras aren't fedoras. They're trilbies. Yeah, they're trilbies. The fact that I know that makes me true fedora. Because a fedora is what Indiana Jones wears. Yeah. It's really big. It, how, do you, how do people mix those well, up? It's, it's <laughs> they straight, don't look it's like each other. Straight brimmed instead of, like, curving up. Yeah. Those are all trilbies, fellas. Yeah. Don't, which, which don't, is a very funny word. Don't m'lady me until you get your hats right. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is she's been pushing me to leave because she feels like we should. And you're okay with that? You've been saying everything's gonna go tits up soon. Just just go tit go to tits. <laughs> go to tits. Just go to tits, man. Gonna, gonna go to tits soon. 
I want to go to tits. <laughs> the air is wrong. Something's in the rocks. He's right. He's always right. What? Oh, she's like... She's all like new agey or like semi-religious in a weird like grab bag like collage way that she's picked for herself. But she's like correctly tuned into like the quartz crystals. They're evil. Because <laughs> that's actually what's happening. Well, you know, <laughs> the quartz and the mind is resonating souls of the punished of the, the, the hundreds of years of bad things happening in Echo. If you're Nostradamusing every day. You're gonna get something right every once in a while, you know? Yeah, but she's oddly specific when Alex she says Jones gets something right <laughs> once in a while. When? I'm sure it's one day. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if... I don't know if... It, it might be too much faith to give Alex Jones even the broken clock is, is right twice a day uh, guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever... I don't know if even that's been true. <laughs> I had to explain that adage to someone not that long ago. Like, how is it right twice a day? It doesn't work. And I was like, no, because like, <laughs> and she's like, but like, it's never. I mean, it's not even on. How is it right? Because <laughs> they, because they're, they're they're too young, so they're not used to the hands on clocks, right? You know, maybe honestly, that might have been a part of it. I've been, I've, I've, I've interacted with people that get oddly frustrated when you talk about like clockwise or counterclockwise, or like you talk about clock directions to give directions to try to help because they don't actually. They're not used to clocks, so they don't really know what it is, and they have to think too much about it, and they get frustrated and annoyed, and you're like, just, just, just give normal directions. I'm like, what? Everyone knows what clock directions are. What, it, what do you mean? And also, how do you have directions on, like, a cir like a circle? Yeah. Like, there's no other way to really it's do it. It's very helpful to be able to say, like, 2 o'clock, as opposed to, like, try to say, like, so, uh, 30 degrees? <laughs> or, like, up and to the right? Like, how do you, I don't know yeah. how you'd, like, say that. But, like, akin to how people see the floppy, the younger people sometimes see the... The floppy disk is the save icon. There are some people that just like are only used to digital displays for time, and so they haven't had to deal with clock faces as much. And so they might they might have genuinely not gotten the metaphor because they're like a broken clock's just a I think, blank screen. I think this girl is just dumb. <laughs> like, I, I think she knows be. how to read a clock. Yeah, but it's funny. Silence. Not even a shuffling of hooves or the squeak of a chair. It just turns and they're both staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> I hold my breath, trying to hear something. Anything. All I can hear is the slight ringing in my ears and the thud of my own heartbeat. It feels like minutes pass and nothing happens. Fuck. Do they know I'm listening? I quickly step back away from the wall and shuffle back to the center table with all the folders. My, ours, my eyes dart to the doorway, half expecting Flynn to be standing with his blue-green eyes piercing right at me. But there's nothing. I'll have to ask Carl about all this when he's feeling better. For now, I should probably at least try to focus on the task at hand. It looks like some of the folders I went through were still on the desk. How'd I put these away? Maybe the mayor was checking to make sure I didn't take anything? I was just curious that I, what I was looking at. Mm. I think the I think the mayor's like uncoding. I think the mayor's realizing what's wrong in this town on some level. Like she was investigating the same papers. Something happened in this room because like the, there's a bunch of fire pokers spilled everywhere. It's like I something mean, happened. I'm waiting for the explanation on that still because yeah. that's I think an odd the, one. I think there just were fire pokers. Now they're knocked over. Why would you have five fire pokers in a room without a fireplace? I don't know. It's Maybe an office a building. Yeah, I don't know why this. I don't see why this place would have a fireplace. I don't know. Maybe the mayor just because you're just managing stuff. You just kind of like end up with strange objects, <laughs> things that have been like collected or turned in for some reason, so, or are used on certain like types of jobs or expeditions or things. I'd be an eccentric mayor out of I, a bunch of random yeah. stuff. I imagine that being a mayor in a tiny town makes you a, a bit of an eccentric mayor. Like there's a little DIY mayoring going on where you probably have to like... DIY <laughs> mayoring. It's probably a little more hands-on. Like there's, ty there's times where you have to go out and do something. And so you probably just end up with strange collections of items that, that come up. <laughs> You'd be like, be like, I told Bill not to let his cows into Carl's pasture again. I gotta drive down there and tell him what's what. <laughs> like that's the kind of mayoring I want to do. Yeah. Or can you just hold these for Jeremy? He'll come back. He'll come by later. <laughs> they got these five fire pokers. They're having a barbecue on the fifth. <laughs> With fire pokers. 
They're for kebabs. <laughs> K-bobs. Just stab it through an entire sheep, hold it over the fire. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter now. It actually cuts down some of the work of trying to find most of this stuff. I'm plugging my keychain thumb drive to the printer and begin scanning. I can't help but think about Carl in the print shop while I'm at it. He's basically been on a giant summer vacation for the past two years with no real worries about money or anything. To go from that to having to wake up every morning at 6, then drive all the way to Peyton and do this for 8 hours. I mean, it's easy, I think. Once you get the basic handle of things, it's the kind of job you can kind of autopilot. You can drift away and just daydream most of the day. I had jobs like that growing up. I like that Chase thinks that he's done growing up. Yeah. He's like 21, isn't he? <laughs> I feel like Chase probably had like two jobs. I think back to 21-year-old me in horror. I'm like, oh god. You shouldn't have been making YouTube videos yet, you weird child. <laughs> Hell, if I went to Mesa instead of Puebla, Pueblo, uh, I could probably have ended up behind the till at Leo's dad's place. Despite everything, I can't help but feel that might have actually been kind of fun. Leo's dad is really nice, always offering to help with things and never seeming too skeeved regarding gay stuff. But, of course, I had to get away from this town. And Peyton's not far enough. I'm still not even sure I like journalism. See? <laughs> See again. Chase! <laughs> Oh, uh, what is your life? I mean, I relate. I mean, I can't I can't judge much there. Well, yeah, but you you picked your own major though. Yeah, but I didn't like it that much. It's okay. I I've like I think everyone everyone kind of bounces around. Yeah. I mean, being a stereotype, I went to college because I wanted to go into get into game design. And then I had a double whammy of more and more news coming out about the game design about uh game development industry being just the worst industry to possibly work for just a horrible nightmare Work where conditions you're overworked and underpaid and it's and the studio you work for will probably fire you the moment the game is over and, you, and you'll have to find a new job and move again and so on and it's just a very hostile like like any field like that it's hostile in part because what like tech in general is hostile but also like any industry that's got a uh, a ton of people that want to work in it that gives the employers too much power. Yeah, it's too competitive. So they, have, they have too many people that, to replace you with and so on. And so, like, they just can be way more shitty to everybody unless you all unionize. Well, it's, it's like, you know, it's like actors and actresses, too, where it's like, oh, you yeah. don't want this? I can replace you in five seconds. Like, you know. It's not good. But then the uh, on top of that, I was also just struggling because it's like... Once you get to the longer programs you're making, you just end up with like, okay, I've, I've made, I've written like a fucking novel, and I basically have to proofread it, but it's written in a different language, <laughs> and all the languages and series of inter is a series of interlocking logic gates that all affect each other, and just trying to figure out why things wouldn't compile, increasingly was just like, if you're doing it as a hobby, it might be kind of fun to be like, okay, well let's let's try to figure out if I can solve this problem, but if you're like doing it on a deadline and you're and you're gonna get a grade that affects your future based on it and so on that's like much more stressful to go through so after three months of computer science i switched to geology but then like my logic was little was literally just that i took i took one month off i took one semester off from a major and just did all the general general ed i could that would be applicable to anything just across the, the stuff that was required no the, matter what the, the breadth requirements that, yeah that was my yeah. that was my norse mythology semester is i took a bunch of stuff that i needed to get done in order to graduate and would be would, would work for any major and then at the end of that month i'm like i didn't really find myself i didn't like <laughs> fucking spirit walk and find my true future and my new calling in life so i'm like well i'm in college and i gotta get a degree uh out of all of, i was like i i liked physical sciences when i was in high school those were fun science class was fun and I just looked at the, all the physical science majors, and geology was the one, the single major that I had the highest number of uh, requirements done for already. So it, it, qu it, it coincidentally had the highest overlap with what I'd taken so far. So I was like, I guess I'll just take geology. And if you go to geology, you end up with a small room of people, and uh, it, the, ge the department's usually small enough that every, every semester you're with the same people again, because they just are going through the major at the same pace as you. And no one, it's no one's first choice. <laughs> so it's the only major where you can start from scratch 
and there are no freshmen in your class because all of you switched to geology <laughs> from something else. It was remarkable. There were three senior citizen people that were taking school for fun there. <laughs> like it was that kind of major. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's first choice was to be Randy Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget he's a geologist because yes. it hardly ever comes up. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I relate to this part a lot. No, no, I have a degree in humanities, which means nothing. Yeah. But but same exact thing. I was like, I went to the counselor. And I'm like, I did all these classes. What can I get for this? <laughs> and it was that's the exact yeah. same thing. I'm like, okay, like, whatever. I need to graduate. Help. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, the classes are interesting and all, but I'm imagining trying to sell myself and my work to all these outlets, and I don't know. I guess I don't really have the energy for it. Plus, I never really liked looking at myself on screen. Being a journalist. Weird. Like, I mean, you don't, Chase, ha you most, don't have most to. Most journalists don't appear on camera. Yeah, most journalists <laughs> write journals. Yeah, most. <laughs> you're thinking of field reporters or or uh, like hosts of I mean, a news maybe channel. Maybe if you're an exceptionally famous journalist, you could be one of the ones that's recognized Like a documentarian? People. Yeah, documentarian. You, you end up becoming a documentarian. Yeah. But like, in and of itself, most journalists do not, are, you don't know what they look like. Yeah. Ooh, uh. Hi. Huh. I don't really remember seeing this one before. <laughs> look at that blurry Samuel. This is a badly taken photo. Murdoch, you fucked up. Yeah, I don't even know how you take a photo this bad. You have to, like, be shaking the camera, like, back yeah. and forth. Well, the cameras were... It took longer to take a picture back then, so any motion. Well, yeah, you had to, but... Like, so you, had to, you had to hold it still for a fairly long time. The buildings so are was, moving. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I, I think back then it was much easier to fuck up this bad. Uh, I'm gonna guess that her name is Cynthia, but I'm not actually sure. It's only like cultural osmosis of being on Twitter <laughs> like absorbing these characters' names. But you can tell at this point, like, that's a, that's a, that's a, the smoke room sprite at that point. <laughs> they're, they're, they're clearly working on the game by now. This must be from a folder I didn't look at. There's no descriptive text attached to it. The fact that Chase is looking at a picture of the voice in his head and he doesn't ha re even recognize him for a second is, is quite an experience. It isn't even, some, he doesn't feel anything about some it. Some strong narrative irony there. Stuff to pick up on when you replay the game after experiencing other things, potentially. I place the photo on the scanner. After a few minutes, I think I've got most of what I need. I, re I remove my thumb drive and turn the power off for the scanner. As I step out into the hall, I notice that the door to the mayor's office is open. It's still pretty quiet in here. You know, I never really knew much about Flynn's aunt. She was kind of in and out for his life growing up, from what I recall. He usually didn't stick around Echo for too long. Her and Flynn's uncle had a weird relationship, and it wasn't like I ever hung out at Flynn's place enough to learn more. He was always just a bit too old to really pal around with like I did with the rest of the group. I mean, Leo was like a year younger, but he didn't really act like it. Flynn was basically an adult by the time he was 14, by the way he handled himself, all self-reliant and such. Curious, I step into the office and I'm taken aback by how much, <clears throat> how much it smells like potpourri. Oh, so he continued further into her office. There's a new, Why is there's he a new doing space. This? this is He's invading spaces. Uh, it just seems like a bad idea. My nose takes me to the source. A small bowl filled with slightly decayed plant life and a wide variety of colors. It gives the office a sort of flower garden scent which doesn't really match the aesthetic. I remember like I I feel like you don't see actual potpourri much anywhere, and most people just know it as like a category in a in a that Jeopardy. <laughs> this potpourri is a category. It took me a while to clock what it was, because yeah, is that's those strange, like fucked up, crinkly, dried, hard plants people will have like in a bowl or something yeah, in their room. Yeah. There's yeah, they're just they're basically they're just dried out flowers and plants that make the room smell good. Yeah, it's like perfumed. 
Um, it's an interesting choice. I grew up, like, my mom liked potpourri. So I used to see it, like, my mom and my grandma. But I feel like it's not, I don't see it anywhere. And most people I talk no. to don't know what potpourri is. If I, if I mention it, like, they're like, potpourri? I have, like, visceral memories of just, like, a, I think textural memories of it. Just were you, fuck, were like, you playing with it? Yeah. You weirdo. I've definitely fucked with potpourri before and just, like, poked at it and picked it up and stuff. It's just, it's just a strange object. How do you not get curious about that? It's like somebody keeping a wreath in their house all year. <laughs> You're like, what are you doing? I've done that. If I, if I get like a bouquet of flowers, I'll, I'll keep it, let it dry out. I had a bunch of sunflowers yeah. that are all dried out. No, but I mean like, a, cool Christmas, like a Christmas wreath. Well, Christmas like, is what ugly. Is, like, what is this doing here? Christmas, should, Christmas is ugly. It should be uh, allocated to the lowest number of days possible. Black, white, and red everywhere. Like a super villain who could only buy hobby shop decorations. Black, white, and red everywhere, like a penguin in a blender. I was gonna say, like, like the newspaper. I read the this... joke is supposed to be a newspaper, but yeah, but black, like, white, and red yeah. all over. Yeah, like yeah, like like newspaper, or like yeah, a penguin in a car accident, or <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the edgy alternative to the standard yeah, response. The panda in a blender. <laughs> yeah, it's a big blender. Yeah, I, I was. I was so primed to hear an edgy response where it's like, ah, oh, it's a black and white creature of some kind and then blood, that I was like completely confused by reading this line. <laughs> like I couldn't I could not parse the supervillain line because it did not end in an edgy joke. Well, I forget the newspaper is the actual answer because I, my brain automatically yeah, goes to something in a blender. Because it was it was such an overdone pun that people started doing edgy jokes when they were twelve. Yeah. I step over a small pile of alabaster quartz, which sits in a ceramic dish on the floor. That's how she can tell! She communes with the mines. <laughs> See, why didn't you learn that in geology? Yeah. I... When you're trying to write a presentation in a hurry, because you... I, I would often procrastinate until the morning of, wake <laughs> up super early, drive to... drive to campus an hour away before the sun has even come up, go into a computer lab, and then research and write an entire presentation on the fly right before class. Uh, it's very annoying when you're trying to find sources about geology, and half of the search results you find online are people that think that rocks are magic. <laughs> and talk about quartz crystals as if they resonate and do magical things, because... <laughs> They really, they really eat at your time. You're like, man, I'm trying to get this done. You guys are making things up. Yeah, I, I, Flynn is right. Some things are ma more made up than others. <laughs> I always attract those people. I don't know why. They always like me. I hate it. And they always talk to me about stuff like that. And they always think I'm going to vibe with it. And I'm just like, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe in that. <laughs> the only upside of those people is that they sometimes manifest into having fun rock shops. But, yeah, no, but I, also love those the, I love those but shops. But also that stuff's too expensive compared to what it should be because they're, they're pretending it does something. And it's just quartz. I just want a fun rock. That's the more. That's my motivation. He, as Keith looks over at his fun, fun rock. rocks that he has this on his shelf, bismuth that I've got. They were like trying to pretend bismuth does something. I'm like, no, it's just cool. It just looks like a castle. You can't pretend bismuth does something, motherfucker. You grew this in a petri dish. I know you did that. <laughs> like some of my, like other rock samples I have around are like, you know, from nature. When you see bismuth samples. People know how to grow it. You can just grow it. <laughs> like it's not, it's not spiritual. What the fuck. <laughs> it, it's it's still a work of nature. It's just the, it's just cool. The world. It's, it's just cool that nature do that. Yeah, it is it's cool not, that nature do but that. But didn't happen naturally. You didn't find it. It's not from an Indian burial ground or whatever the fuck. Like, <laughs> whatever you think makes the stuff do things. <clears throat> it's as it's as nature. It's as natural as a fork. <laughs> forks are also pretty, pretty forks can pretty be awesome, cool. People dude. collect forks. They don't usually think that it'll like align their chakrams or whatever. <laughs> I mean, maybe they haven't tried that yet. <laughs> they just gotta stab it in there. <laughs> give, it a, give it a go. Yeah. Move them by force. <laughs> yeah, you just, gotta, you just gotta keep poking around till you find your like your reset button that only a fork can reach. <laughs> oh god, like no, a, that like sounds a, like it's a like bad a idea. <laughs> oh no, there's a lot of places a fork could reach that I don't think you should be sticking a fork, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh god, it was on a, it was on the floor. I just registered the fact that the, the alabaster quartz was in a dish on her floor. She's up to shit. Which is strange, of course. There's a weird-looking globe on the edge of her desk, too. 
Ooh, close up. This is drawn. Yeah. That's different. It's actually really surreal to have a, a drawn background in this game. It is. Become it's way more common in the other games as they go on. But it's it's neat. That's very strange looking. What does she believe in? Also, that's like a really nice looking desk. Yeah, it's got houndstooth on it. Wait, Let's is see. that houndstooth? I don't know. I don't it's think just, it's just a cool pattern. Let me know in the comments what pattern yeah. is that. Let's see. Looks like bugs. I imagine Cardamon drew this. I think they're the ones that drew the TJ route CGs that looked different from the other CGs. Mm -hmm. And then I think they went on to draw the backgrounds for arches, if I'm getting the lineage right. There's a lot of people involved in this team. Uh, I step closer and notice several little prongs which hover over what I think is the meridian. Actually, there's no landmass indications or any labeling of, on the sphere to speak of. I reach out and touch the smooth plastic surface. Pressing down, I give the globe a gentle spin. As it rotates, the middle prong begins to bounce like a dowsing rod before sticking to the surface. As the sphere continues to spin, the sticky effect lessens and it bounces back. Huh. Must be a magnet on the other side. I spin it some more and the other prongs lean slightly toward specific points on the globe. It's kind of a weird knick-knack. I don't think she would like it if you called it a knick-knack. Knick-knack, Pattywick. Give a dog a bone? Oh, you can see the table in the drawing and the weird globe. And there's a significant enough effect on the screen that you could probably add the globe in, then do the effect, and then it would look like the globe was already there the whole time. Yeah, because I, I doubt something like that exists in the real world. Or that they'd have the right photo for that. it, but who knows. The, uh, I'm curious about the globe thing because like we had... Uh, there's an ongoing thing that's like... It seems to be a, a form of like where Howley ended up leaning with the horror of the Echo universe is that like superstitious stuff and this isn't that original for horror necessarily but like it's the idea that like superstitious stuff is real but not in like the like religious belief usual stuff or like usually not like building off of like stuff that people already are used to at like being like in a tropey sense real and horror stuff like oh spirits are real or other stuff like that it's like uh increasing it's in some cases like increasingly mundane like quack beliefs turn out to be real and that it gets wrapped into the horror so think about how like the quartz crystals in the mine are resonating the the suffering of the people that brian tortures and kills uh this thing is probably actually a built to resonate with that stuff and so like all of her beliefs are probably being encouraged and she's seen as this weirdo by flynn and other people but it's because they keep actually like proving to be onto something from her perspective like because of how echo is this stuff probably is actually like indi indicating something that thing probably helps her figure something out about what's going on locally <laughs> and i think about how like in cameron uh in cameron's story and arches uh the sequel to echo that game also plays around with the idea of like what if like oh uh, we'll, we'll we'll play around with like this wacky idea of like what if you could commune with ghosts or you could like you had like uh like sort of esp style abilities like that, that's a funny joke and but like then it starts playing with the idea like what if that's real like what if what if what if the thing that shouldn't happen does happen and then the story has to deal with that is an interesting trajectory that the uh, this universe seems to go in i mean i do like the uh the focus on the supernatural that isn't like the wham in your face like there's gonna be like uh straight up bigfoot aliens like i like the, the, the little subtle things you know yeah there's something special about like you know th there being a jackalope or something <laughs> jackalope yeah which is a furry a furry jackalope <laughs> <laughs> you know I never have thought about that, but I'm sure that's a fursona. Oh, absolutely. Days. That'd be easy to, that's easy to find. I'm sure that's Ida. You know, I'm sure that is easy to find. People already hybrid stuff in every other combination just on the fly, so the, the well worn tropey ones are probably represented. There was a 
people so there's two towns somewhere in in the midwest that argue about who had the first jackalope obviously jackalopes are not real jackalopes are taxidermy art where they combine antelope antlers onto a rabbit in case you were from it you're not from around here and you don't know that but yeah. like they had these two two fucking towns would argue about who who had it first and then the original one got stolen and to this day no one knows who took it Mm. They had like a little feud about like having the the, the 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 famousness of the jackalope. I've just seen jackalopes around before. You just go on a road trip and you'll just see like on someone's like barbed wire fence, they'll just have like a rabbit strung up with antlers like glued to its head. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a macabre. tradition. It's a tradition now, but like I don't like it. It's, it's just it's back just in the day, everyone thought that was putting. thought that was fucking real, and people freaked out over it when they were like at the tavern. You know, yeah. But then they started arguing about, like, like I said, that another town had one too, and then they started having a fight over who had it first. It's it just, it's just funny to think that, that was like somebody's whole life was arguing about having the jackalope <laughs> first. Small problems. I like that. I wish my problems were smaller. <laughs> There's not really anything in here that can help me with my project. With that, I turn and make my way back to the front office. Yep. There's nothing that makes a detail more important in this setting than Chase thinking it's not important. <laughs> that really highlights that yeah. it's going to be of importance to us, the audience. Yeah, and it's not even entirely just because, like, ah, oh, dumb Chase, like, why hasn't he noticed the important detail? It's the fact that, like, you can feel the hand of the author choosing to introduce this element that Chase then doesn't have anything to do or think about. You're like... Well, it was introduced for a reason. Yeah. This is probably really important, actually. It's probably telling us a lot about what's happening here somehow. 